Where did they come from? Where did they go? We'll find out where are they now. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to our new episode of Where Are They Now? Today's very special guest is Paul Mercurio. And before we get talking to him, I'm going to quickly read through a bio that I've uh, pre-written out here, and then we will get into our questions with Paul to find out where is he now. Okay, so firstly, let's get into Paul's profile. Paul Joseph Mercurio, AM, born the 31st of March, 1963. He's an Australian actor, dancer, and TV presenter. Mercurio is best known for his lead role in Baz Luhrmann's Strictly Ballroom, which would probably make sense because a lot of our questions we've got from the fans are Strictly Ballroom related. His father was the character actor Gus Mercurio. Ironically, and we'll talk about, uh, we'll ask Paul about Gus a little bit later. I watched a boxing match today because we have Barry Michaels on next week and Gus was the referee. Um, I didn't know that till today. Um, in the way of a biography, uh, Mercurio was born in Swan Hill, Victoria, 1963, and began ballet at the age of nine. By the age of 19, in 1992, he was the principal dancer with the Sydney Dance Company, a position he held for the next 10 years. During this time, he was commissioned to choreograph, 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 choreograph. choreograph. We're not even editing that out because that's okay. Uh, six works performed by the company. Mercurio left the dance company in August 1992 uh, to found the Australian Choreograph. Choreographic. I can't get it out. Australian Choreographic, Choreographic Ensemble. Uh, ensemble, <laughs> which danced from 1992 to 1995, where he was director, principal dancer, and principal choreographer. <laughs> choreographer. We're getting there. I'm not editing this out. This is all about fun. And Mercurio made his film debut in Strictly Ballroom, receiving an Australian Film Institute Award nomination back in 1993. His film credits have included Exit to Eden, Back to Beyond, Cozzy, Red Ribbon Blues, Welcome to Whoop Whoop, The Dark Planet, The First Nine and a Half Week, Kick, The Sydney, uh, Sydney, A Story of the City. Paul has been busy as we can go from there. Um, what's Paul doing now, though? We're going to find out shortly, but before we do, Mercurio has also appeared in popular shows such as Blue Healers, All Saints, Murder Call, Medivac, Heartbreak High, Water Rats, The Day of the Roses, and Mercurio continues to dance and choreograph professionally. He was in a movement a consult with Will Smith movie, I, Robot, and also in the American TV campaign for Coca-Cola. Were you involved in choreographing that, Paul? Uh, yes. Did- that, that's what that would be. That was uh, well done too. Was, <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll come back to that. And Mercurio was a judge on the Australian version of Dancing with the Stars until 2008. Okay. So the idea of the show, ladies and gentlemen, is we find out where is Paul now. Paul, welcome to our first season of Where Are They Now, which may be renamed as per your suggestion earlier What are they too. up to now? What are they up to now? We may rename that. Thanks now. for having me, Darren. Well, how, how have you been? Um, pretty good. Now, we, we spoke just earlier on the phone and I said, are you the mayor? And you said, no, I'm not the mayor. Explain to us what it is. Um, well, I'm a councillor, which is, to be honest, um, nothing I ever thought I'd ever do in my life. Um, so I've surprised myself. I certainly like to jump off cliffs and see what happens. Um, there, Where I live, there was some sort of stuff going on and I kind of went, I'm not too happy about that. Council elections were coming up and I thought, I'll go and be a councillor. And uh, blow me down, I got in, and um, so now I'm a councillor for the area I live in, which um, which basically means, you know, you go to a lot of meetings and talk a lot and, and hopefully uh, achieve some change and help some people. Now, what uh, whereabouts is it? This is in Victoria. You're based out in the so, south. Yeah, I live, in, uh, I live in the Mornington Peninsula, so yes. I'm a councillor in the Mornington Peninsula Shire Council. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I live in um, an area called uh, the, the Watson Ward. So okay. it takes in three kind of townships. Yes. Um, with, you know, about 17 or 18,000 people in total. Um, so, you know, it's um, 10% of the population of Mornington. Um, wow. So, you know, look, I only just got in in November. Um, it's part time. So, as per usual, as an actor, I'm looking for work because, mm-hmm. you know, you get a little bit of, you get a stipend as they call it, or a step in. I'm not sure how to pronounce that one. It's a bit like choreography. Um, I'm not editing that out. No, don't. Um, 
So, but, you know, I still need to work. I still yeah. need to, uh, you know, get some other stuff. Um, and, of course, COVID's, you know, the last kind of paying gig I had, really, well, there's two. Um, the last acting paying gig I had, I did a couple of weeks on Neighbours back in March, wow. which was um, which was great. It, 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 um, I kind of never imagined doing Neighbours or, you know, that sort of sitcom sort of stuff, but I had a really good time. The people I worked with was great, and it was just great to get your acting chops going again yeah um, and I really mourned finishing uh, and COVID got in the way because I was going to be a recurring character but be uh, with COVID they had to change a lot of stuff including the writing and I think um, COVID ripped me out of um, or wrote me out of, of that but um, we'll see if anything comes up this year and then the other last kind of gig I did was in November really um, where I make my own spice rubs for barbecue slow and slow. Wow movement. awesome. So I had quite a nice little order from a company out of Sydney um, nice. and then of course I became a counsellor and I've been busy reading mind-bogglingly boring um, briefings. Well, I mean, your acting surely might help you in that cancelling thing because I would have thought there's, there's, it'd be prickly. People are pretty serious about their local communities. Uh, look, people are really serious um, and the councillors are, you know, pretty serious. I just, I'm not really into politics, yeah. you know, and I'm not really into ego and power trips and all that sort of stuff. And, you know, I guess I need to be careful what I say now about things, but, you know, there's a, there's a little bit too much ego and politics in the whole within and without the whole council thing. So um, I'm just going to do it my way and, uh, you know, make a difference, make some changes. And um, I'm in it for four years, so. It's a fair income commitment. Sure is. And I'm sure you'll, sure you'll do a great job. I have, I have um, around about 10 or 15 questions to go through. So I'm hoping, um, I'm hoping you're happy to answer that. But let's start off with the one I was just asking you about um, when I was doing the intro. I was watching, I was speaking to Barry Michael this morning because yeah. Barry's coming on the show next week. And give him my best, you know, give I, him a, you know, say I good day to Barry. I haven't seen him for ages. Oh, well, I, my plan is at the end of the first series is to do a Zoom with all of us together, um, all of series one. So hopefully you can say good day to him at the same time, which would be great. But He's a lovely, lovely fella to speak to on the phone and I'm, I'm, I'm a boxing fan, so I'm really excited to have him on. Um, but I was saying to Barry, I was watching the video this morning and Gus Mercurio was the referee. I actually didn't know that's what Gus did. Was that not his, um, your dad's main job? What was? No, um, the boxing stuff was um, a, a, quite a passion of dad's. Um, yeah. You know, as a young young bloke in America, he boxed. Uh, he was in the Merchant Marines, and he kind of he boxed. You know, in the Merchant Marines. Um, the story goes, he came out from America in '56 with the Olympics, and right. it gets a bit murky because, on in some ways, the story is he came with the boxing team, right? Or maybe he just came at the same time. You know, okay. we're not quite. Sure. really clear if he had anything to do um, with the, the team. Certainly I've not seen anything. But um, so he came out in 56 and um, stayed. Um, I did a show called um, uh, Who Do You Think You Are? Who I think it was sort of called that anyway. Yeah, I recall. Um, and it traced my family history on different sides and they really focused on my dad's side because um, it, my grandfather was mafia. Ooh. And a made man, which means if you're really? a made man in mafia, then you've actually been involved in a murder. And, That's you know, pretty so serious. It's pretty significant. And I actually think Dad came out from America to get away from the mafia. Wow. Um, you know, so I've heard some stories, and I don't blame him for not wanting to live in Milwaukee around all of that. So he came out here, but um, he became a he studied to be a chiropractor. So he came out as a chiropractor. Yeah. Um, yeah. But his passion was always boxing. So. Um, he um, refereed a lot. He, you know, used to go around in the tents, you know, tent fighting and refereeing. Uh, then he became a judge. And at one time, he was only one of 36 people in the world that could actually referee a world title fight. So oh, um, he helped set up the, um, the Australian um, Boxing Hall of Fame. Uh, and then I think they all had a bit of a fisticuffs and they kicked him out. But, um, oh, really? Yeah. yeah. So he's, um, he's been a very passionate um, boxing follower, without a doubt. I was speaking to Sam Solomon uh, last week or the week before we did a podcast with him. Um, lives down your way, actually, as well. He's Well, he's down Seaford. He still lives around yep. there and um, won a world title, et cetera. And I asked him, did he think the boxing fraternity was cleaning up? And he said, well, it's as clean as it's going to get now. Um, it's 
talk about mafia and fixing mm. things uh, ugh, just worries me a little bit at the best of time because I love boxing, but I, I worry about some of the results at times. Anyway, I digress. Um, all right, Paul, let's get into the hard questions before we get to the um, to the uh, fan questions. Uh, tell me what was your favourite um, acting gig you've done? The next one. <laughs> um, considering you haven't earned a dollar since March from acting, I can see that. There's, well, I mean, the questions, the, the four questions I've got here after are all about strictly ballroom. Yeah, look, but up um, there, I guess um, you know it's really it's just interesting. You know, um, it's a hard question to answer because it's it's kind of complex. You know, obviously everyone wants to go, oh, strictly ballroom is the best thing I've you know, and strictly ballroom was a a, a wonderful experience, and um, I was I loved it and uh, grateful for it, and it allowed me to go on and do other things. Um, but I was fairly new to that sort of acting. You know, yeah. I'd acted as a kid in musicals and plays and things, but. Um, and I danced on stage for years, you know, and it's funny because when I did Strictly, people would go, wow, it's your first time you've acted. And I'm like, well, I've just been on, I've been dancing for the last 10 years on stage. Just because it's I don't say anything, it doesn't mean you're not telling a story. And yeah. that's acting is telling a story. Yeah. And using whatever you can at your means, whether it's voice or, or movement or, yeah. you know, or even, you know, I've done my own cooking shows and things and I kind of figured the food that I put on the plate tells a story. Yeah. So, <clears throat> Pardon me. Um, so it's really interesting. Some of the some of the most valuable acting experiences I've had are in um, uh, in class. Really, you know, I did. I haven't done too many acting classes, but I did an acting workshop uh, quite a number of years ago. And um, it, it, when you're in a class, you're allowed to make mistakes. When you go onto a film set and they're spending two hundred thousand dollars a day, you're not allowed to make mistakes. Yeah, it's very, it's very different different kind of place so um i remember this workshop i did it was a couple of days and just some of the just the freedom of being able to go to to all these sorts of places and you know and i surprised myself because i went to places i didn't expect so i learned more about me and um as a person and i learned more about me as an actor and um you know and this is i'm talking back in 1998 i think or 1999 um, and it was just that that was a really a favorite experience and the neighbors experience I had in March I really didn't expect to get as much out of it but I worked with this um, lovely um, lady uh, called Georgie Stone who's right. a transgender okay. and she plays the character in fact she's kind of plays her her story it's her real sort of story that they've put into neighbors and I play her father and wow. um, so it was a really interesting, really personal. And again, she was just great to work with. And and I'd like to think I've matured as an actor as well. So there was just some, just some really you know, nice things and surprises. And um, you know, I got excited about acting again. And I never thought I'd get excited about acting on Neighbours, but it's fast and furious. You got to yeah. be, you know, you got to be on. You got to be ready. Um, and you've got to be kind of in that honest, truthful, vulnerable zone. And um, and that's the that's the kind of the, what I enjoy about the acting. So and when I say to you, the next job, hopefully, you know, the next job will be that. I don't know if you heard my cat. Yeah, I did. I did. Gorgeous. Um, you know, the next job um, hopefully will be, will teach me things about myself as a person, as an actor, as a human, and um, then I get all inspired about it. I guess it's all about evolving. And as you say, you don't know what's going to come next. Oh, I bet you 30 years ago, you didn't think you'd be doing a gig with, you know, a transgender person. And, you know, in 30 years ago, that wasn't even, it seemed like a topic on the table, but now there's so much to learn from it all. And, oh. and, and I have a look at your, your gig list and we read out some of it before, um, you know, you've done a lot of TV as well as, you know, movies and, and shows like you've got a lot of experience, Paul, and, mm. and COVID must be killing um, the industry during this period, the shutdown, it's going to be tough for a lot of people in, you know, your industry is tough enough as it is, uh, you know, it's hard to get gigs all the time and keep in, the, you know, and not get stereotyped in one certain type of gig. So mm. yeah, you've got to evolve. Absolutely. I've been, um, I've been very lucky because I've done lots of different things. You know, I've done that, you know, I, I don't really choreograph or dance anymore. I'm kind of a little bit past that. Yeah. Um, 
which is fine because, you know, I'm older and things hurt more. <laughs> um, you know, but I've done the acting, I've done the films, I've done the acting, the TV, I've done, you know, hosting and uh, I've had my own food show and written three cookbooks and done had my own restaurant. You know, I've done a whole lot of stuff. And um, someone actually said, you know, you know, when I was going for counsel, they're going, what do you know? You know, that have you have you been to university and do you have a degree in economics and things? And I go, well, a degree in life. <laughs> no, I've just got, I've just, I'm pretty rich in life experience. So um, there are other people on the council that are, you know, a barrister and good at economics and things like that. So I, I bring what I bring. Yep. Um, but also I've done so many things because you have to in this, in, you know, uh, in Australia or anywhere, you know, you can't just rely on getting a TV show because I've had plenty, but, they stop eventually, and so you've got to go and do other things. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, it, with COVID being such a big issue, one of the questions here: How do you reinvent yourself during a COVID period? Do do you open? You become a counsellor. <laughs> I walked into that, didn't I? Hey, it's working. It's working. Um, let me ask you about if you if you were to start again your career again, what would you do differently? Would you do anything differently? Um. Look, um, I'm, I'm not one for th- for dwelling on that s- stuff much. Yep. You know, um, you've been pretty successful, to be fair. I've been, you know, I've been pretty lucky. I mean, I've certainly had my highs and lows, and I've certainly had some pretty hard times and some yep. very high times. If if anything, um, in my in the bulk of my film career, I probably would have manage my money better but being a dancer you you know you never had money yeah. so then when you had money you bought things and you did stuff and um you know um and you know if i had managed that better i'd probably own my house rather than the bank owning it and things like that so um that's life that's yeah. life you know if, um i've just not really been great that way yeah um so i'd certainly just write myself a note and say hey mate put a bit of money away and <laughs> I think, I should have bought I think my first everyone flat. our age, when they get there, would do that. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, other than that, way. you know, it's um, – I don't – I'm just not one for thinking, you know, would I would I do it differently because I'm pretty happy with how it's – I'm generally happy with how it's turned out. I mean, it could be worse. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, you know, things could be sort of better, but I'm pretty happy. You're happy, uh, you're healthy, and you're alive. You can't ask for more than that. No. Who's who's been Paul Mercurio's inspiration? Who's someone you've been able to lean on as a mentor over the years and go, look, you know, I'm here, or what should I do here, or can you give me some advice? Um, look, certainly there's been people around that I've sought advice from, but very early on I realised that it was up to me. Yeah. You know, um, back when mum was, because mum and dad split up and, you know, we were over in Perth and dad was in Melbourne and he didn't send money and, you know, things were pretty tough. And um, I remember writing a letter to my Uncle Bob complaining and saying I wanted a surfboard and, you know, can't get it. And Uncle Bob never wrote back. And I kind of went, oh, I mean, I really wanted him to write back with the money giving me the surfboard, you know. Um, That's plausible. And and I kind of went, oh, okay. Um, I've got to be Uncle Bob. Yeah. So certainly I've had some you know some terrific teachers and some great supporters and um um you know my mum's an inspiration um you know she had to put up a lot dealing with um her life and raising four kids on her own and you know all of that um and obviously you know i've been married for 33 years and um, i've got three beautiful kids and you know daughters and they inspire me and they support me and um so I guess over the years I've had great support, but you know you've just got to kind of really got to get out there and be your own inspiration. It's, it's really good advice because I think quite often people look up to um, someone and they might guide them on what worked for them, but it won't necessarily work for the next person, especially in your industry. As I said, it, it, it is tough. I've got a lot of mates that have been in the acting, singing. Um, arena and it's tough you, you're, you're hot when you're hot and you're not when you're not and been there done that uh, you know I always I loved it when Strictly came out I was the the next big sex symbol in Australia and <laughs> yep. um, I used to get chased down the street by girls and all sorts of weird crazy things 
Um, and um, are you blushing said, a little, Paul? Is there a little bit of blushing there? It, well, no, it's just my high blood pressure. <laughs> um, um, and then the following year, a new movie came out. And the young kid, the young bloke in that, they said the next Australian sex symbol. And I thought, geez, that was quick. You <laughs> that know, was before you started, even the cat's not happy about that um, one. Come on. Um, so you know, it's the whole fame thing, and you know that that's all just. I always kind of think it's just a byproduct of of the work you do. Yeah. Um, and I, you know, again, I was lucky. I was married when it, when the fame really hit. You know, as a dancer, I was fairly famous in in a, in a smaller world. Yes. Um, for dance, but certainly when um, the film stuff hits and it, it goes to America and England and Japan and all those sorts of places. You know, being married and having a baby, I was really, um, at that stage, we had two babies. Um, that really kept my feet on the ground, you know. Yeah. And I've, I've been to Hollywood, you know, I've been out with parties and I've seen people burn out pretty badly. Yeah. So um, I'm very grateful that um, I had that experience and I was married. Yeah. Tell me tell me about, you know, home life just in, in general. Your wife's obviously, it's a long time to be married. Something's yep. working pretty well there. Yes, so. She, she would have been your rock a lot through the highs and lows. Yeah, look, the same for both of us, you know. We've both kind of been through the, the highs and lows and um, marriage is about, um, you know, um, loving each other, supporting each other, nurturing each other, giving yeah. each other space, um, you know. Um, you know, it's – and we, we – because I'm, you know – I was going to say an actor, I, I tend to be home a lot. So yeah. home life was great. So I could be here to get the girls breakfast and take them to school and pick them up from school. And, you know, so we've, we're, we're a very close um, family. Mm -hmm. um, and my wife and I worked together and toured together uh, with Sydney Dance Company. So, you know, we had some wonderful experiences, That's you know, travelling the world and um, someone else paying for it. So That works. Um, so, you know, it's all good, but my, two of my daughters have kind of moved back in, moved out, moved back in. They've just I moved out. Back so, <laughs> so my wife and I are now empty nesters again. Oh, again. How are you finding that? Well, it's look, it's kind of it's lovely. I mean, we love being together and hanging out, but um, we, loved it. we love it when the kids are here, um, even though when I say kids, they're 24, 29 and 31, you know. <laughs> but they always feel like your kids. <laughs> well, they always will be, you know, yeah. but... Um, a full house is a happy house and, um, uh, you know, an empty house is uh, a, um, a place of quiet reflection. Yes. <laughs> well, I'm not there yet. I have three kids all under 17 and they're all home and uh, there's days where I do wish, gee, you know, if they could move out for one day, that would be great. But yep. uh, that, that's not going to happen and, and I am enjoying it. I agree. A full house is a very good house. Mm. Um, what does... Paul Mercurio do on his perfect day off? What's your perfect day off? Well, you know, I kind of, it's a really weird thing because when someone thinks about a day off, you, you're thinking, I've just done, you know, six-day week and I've got a day off. Now, especially with COVID, I've just had, you know, I've just done a, a nine-month day off. Yeah, that's <laughs> you nice. Know, uh, so it's kind of, and being freelance, it's just a really weird thing because, you know, when you've got a day off or a week off or something, you, you're kind of worried about what's next. Yeah. Um, so I guess the important thing to me is to, to get into that space and go, well, okay, so I haven't worked for three months. You know, um, today is Sunday. So what I'm going to do actually for, um, is I'm going to not worry about it. Yeah. You know, I'm going to give myself space and just go, right, today's for me. Mm-hmm. Or today's not a day I've got to worry, or, you know, worry about what's if I'm going to get another job or what's kind of happening. Um, so I guess I'll just give myself permission to have a day off. Yeah. So what's a day off? It's um, it's a day off worry. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's giving yourself space, um, doing something that you like, whether it's a computer game. Um, my wife and I walk most days, which is really lovely. Yes. Um, a day off, we might go down to a nice little coffee shop down by the Yeringa Harbour or um, somewhere and, you know, just just enjoy, enjoy the day, you know, yeah. get out of the house, um, remove yourself from that, um, from what are you, your, I was going to say normal is, you know, I guess if you work, there's yeah. there's a kind of a idea of what that looks like. So um, take yourself outside of that space. Yeah. 
just you know, just to try and do something to, different that you would normally do. Yeah. Now, now, when I'm at home and not working, I'm making sourdoughs, I'm smoking brisket, you know, I make rubs. So I'm doing other things. And as a dancer, it was really interesting because on your day off, you just did a lot of other things, you know, because you were so kind of fit and active you'd think a day off you'd just be sitting around i'd go skating or surfing or you'd just you know get out there and do things and then you go to work on monday tide yeah but, um yeah it's a fun, it's a funny one and what you do is a little bit different as well tell me about the rubs because you've got my mouth watering here paul what's what's going on with the rubs is it something you're going to continue to sell i know you said you've got a big order to sydney is it something you're yeah. going to Tell me about it. Oh, Kat. My, see, my wife's out riding the bike in the um in the, the shed. Um, yeah, look, uh, look, I've always liked to cook. Mm-hmm. You know, in fact, one of my very first t- TV appearances was on the Helen O'Grady show in WA. Wow. I think in um, must have been the late seventies, and I cooked a cheese toasted sandwich. And that was actually my first TV experience. Um, so it's kind of interesting in that it went right around to eventually, you know, film and acting and then have my own food show and, and, and things. Um, so with the, the rubs, I've always sort of cooked. When I went to um, America, when I did the Will Smith film, film, I was there in 2004 or three, no, four. And I was actually there for five months. So it was a long time. But um, I got met a bloke because I'm a home brewer as yes. well um i met a guy at this there were six brew pubs in walking distance from my hotel in um in canada in vancouver so on my on my day off because i had days off then because you work yep. six days a week i would walk to the different brew pubs generally four or five and have a few beers and but i met a, a brewer at a pub called the dicks which was kind of like a smokehouse brew house yep. Beautiful. And I uh, got chatting to him, met a beer dude who, um, who who actually went on to be the CEO of one of the biggest brewing schools in America. Wow. Um, so I did a brew with the with the brewer guy. Then I got him to the kitchen and um, they showed me about the brisket and rubs. Um, so I just doing sign language. No, I yeah. haven't fed the dog. <laughs> um, <clears throat> pardon me. So I really got into that um you know, some of that American stuff. And I guess, I've, you know, touring to uh, to America, you know, the food and Massive. You know, I loved that American pub food. And my love of beer, we did a three-month tour around the world and we were in um, in Europe for a month and um, they used to have these places called Beer Dill Academies, so like beer academies. And the, the menu would have 150 different beers on it. What? So, um, you know, I'd get excited about beers and then I'd get excited about food. When I was in Canada, I started really understanding about smoking low and slow. Yes. Uh, so when I came home from Canada, I started smoking my own brisket. And, um, of course, to do that, you've got to have a rub. And there weren't really rubs Man, available. Yeah. And so mm-hmm. I made a, a beef rub, which I still make today. Wow. Um, and then I went on and made a few different ones. And eventually I opened a, a sort of a smokehouse restaurant or beer cafe in Mornington in 2014. Wow. And I had a smoker from America and we used all my recipes. I cooked. Um, I had all my rubs there. But unfortunately, the guy that brought me in was a lying, thieving scumbag. Hmm. And um, I had to walk away from that. That's sad. Um, richer in experience, much, much, much poorer financially. Um, uh so I was kind of going, what am I going to do now? And I thought, well, the rubs, I've got the rubs. They taste great. People are starting to bring rubs out. So I, I put them in a packet and started selling them about three years ago. And and, and you're still selling them? Yeah. Look, again, COVID killed me because I couldn't go out and get spices. And, you know, there's a whole, so they kind of completely stopped up until November when I had that order from Sydney. Yes. Um, so now that, you know, I'm on council, I've got to find work. Um so, you know, this in the next the month, I'm trying to ramp the rub business back up and get it going. But um, we're going to promote the daylights out of it here. Um, well, you can buy them on my webpage at paulmercurio.com. Paulmercurio.com. Um, we're going to put a little thingy up here. And at the end of the show, I'm going to put a link through and we'll put it up on the Facebook and Instagram. Yeah, I'll have to start page. making some. I'm going to order then. some, Paul. I'm going to order yeah. some. Well, good. Look, um, and, the, you know, they're terrific. We actually, Andrea, my wife and I, we had um, barbecued chicken wings last night with the chicken rub. <laughs> I think, you know, because there's quite a bit of chilli in it and, and other flavours. Yeah. 
Um, but, you know, it's like when you go to the shops, you buy chilies and sometimes they're hot and sometimes they're not. So whatever last chili powder I bought was hotter than... <laughs> did you, did you need a homebrew to wash it down, though, more importantly? Uh, well, I, fortunately, I've let my homebrew lag. I haven't actually brewed a beer at home for about four years, sadly. Oh, so really? Like, yeah. Look, I make salamis and, you know, there's other things I'm doing. So um, there's only so much time in one day off. <laughs> That, that that we never have. Uh, I, I, well, we're definitely going to promote that at the end of it, and I am absolutely going to grab some. I must admit, I only got into, I bought a, um, a Weber uh, a, a little while ago, and I've had quite a few attempts at the whole slow cooking, but I think I get slightly excited and try to pull it out a little bit too early. Or no, you got a kettle. Yep. Are yep. you smoking um, snake method? Uh, oh, I, I tell you how bad I am, Paul. The email might be a bit longer. You've got to return me. I'm I'm bad at. I'm grabbing it. I I am rubbing some stuff over it. I'm putting it in the Weber for like four hours, and I'm leaving it. And then I read in the one of the Ziegler and Brown books the other day that it should have been in there for seven hours, and I'm getting the temperatures all wrong. Now it's even bad. Still tastes pretty good, but I am absolutely missing a rub. I bought one from like Woolworths, and um. I know. I'm sorry, yeah. um, but it was it wasn't much chop. But I'm totally interested in it. Like you, it's hard to get a day off. Um, I have three kids in sport, and you know it is crazy. But when I do, I love cooking. My kids tell me the only thing you can cook dad is a barbecue, and by that they mean sausages and hamburgers. So I need your expertise here. Well, there's there's two. You know, you've got hot and fast, which is just sausages, hamburgers, and you can do wings and things, and then you've got low and slow. Okay. So the low and slow, you need to be able to work out to get your barbecue up to like 110 degrees and let it sit there for 12 hours. So there's a few methods of doing that. That's fair income. And, and, you know, if you're cooking a brisket, you might cook that for 10 or 12 hours. If you're cooking some um, some ribs, or that they may take um, six hours. So there's just, I mean, there's, you know. There's, so much. There's, on one hand, it's kind of simple, but on the other hand, it's, once you've got a handle on it, it's simple, but just there's a bit of complexity to get through first. And and having that passion of experimenting to fail, like anything, you know, whatever we do in life, it's just part of it. And yeah. I'm loving it. I'm loving the the side of it, but your rub will be my next uh, my next purchase on it. Well, I hope you like chili. I've got uh, I a do. couple of them are a bit hot. I do. I'll tell the kids it's not, and I'll just have a bit of fun with them on that one. Um, moving on to the next question. So next question, somebody... It comes up to you tomorrow and they say, uh, Paul, I'm looking at getting into acting, singing, dancing, whatever it is you've been involved in as well. What advice do you give them? Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, you know what? I, I do actually say that. You know, I said, don't do it. You know, it's, it's a hard gig. Boom, boom, boom. And then if they say, well, I really want to, I go, great. You know, if you're really passionate about it, yeah, then go for it. But you've got to understand it's a very hard business. Um only a few people really kind of make it and get a lot out of it or not when I say I shouldn't say get a lot out of it there's you know there's not a lot of people that work full time at it yeah you know it's there's just not a lot of work and there's all of those sorts of things so I always say if you really really want to do do it go for it give it give it everything go for it but remember that you have to have something else as well uh, you know, you what's what's a common myth that comes with your industry? You know, is the myth is you'll just be rich and famous, and you'll you you know you'll be Chris Hemsworth pretty quickly. You know, well, yeah, no. Nah, look, yeah, I have no idea if people kind of um, if people think that. I, I, yeah, I don't know. I mean, if I kind of think if people want to get into acting because they want to get famous, just don't. It's for the wrong reason, and um, you know you you might just get burnt out pretty quickly, you know, with that. Um, yeah, I, I, yeah, you know, I guess there's that thing where people think, oh, I'll be found and, you know, and I will be um, famous. But it's, it's, it doesn't work like that, you know. Yeah. It's, um, it's the few exceptions that are, that are like that. There's, it's tough. You, you can count them on two hands and all the rest, the, the, the hundreds of thousands of other actors around or... Um, make their money working in a restaurant. Yeah. What a great time to support Paul Mercurio and his local Victorian business. Simply go to paulmercurio.com 
have a look through his website here you'll see things about his career and in addition to that some amazing cookbooks cooking with beer is absolutely on my agenda here you'll also be able to buy his rubs that he talks about a little bit later again in the show there's some chutneys and some mustards there's no better way than to support your local actors like paul mercurio by supporting him now back to paul um, okay, so Paul, just going back to, I'll go to a couple of the questions from your fans, and I, I've already touched on a couple of them, which will be easy. Um, so I'll, I'll let those ones go. Did you have a favourite scene in Strictly Ballroom? Um, yeah, I like the little kind of um, the perhaps, perhaps, perhaps dance behind the curtain with yep. um, Tara. You know when um, where it becomes a little bit more involved than just kind of dancing together and yeah then she falls over and then they send her home and it all gets a bit mean but I've always enjoyed I've always liked that scene I've always liked that dance and um it was quite a you know a magical kind of um, moment it's good to reflect on those as well I'm sure you they're the things that make it all worthwhile and yeah the late nights and the stress and all that the next two are a little bit odd right and the first one I wasn't going to ask but I'll, okay. I'll ask it it says did he like doing the full Monty? Now, oh, I, yeah. I, haven't, I haven't seen that. So that was obviously a fair few years ago or something you did the full well, Monty? Well, that was 2004. Right, okay. So when I was in Canada doing the Will Smith film where I was choreographing robots, I was the movement consultant. Yep. Uh, I then came back to smoke my first brisket, but also to um, rehearse and um, be in the full Monty. Yep. Um, it was great. I mean, it was such a... Um, a, a great musical. Uh, I'd never kind of uh, done a professional musical theatre show before, so I was yeah. a bit nervous about singing because I, you know, had sung back in high school plays, you know, but they're high school plays. Yeah. Not on stage in front of 1,800 people singing. <laughs> so I was pretty nervous about that. Um, I did well, got through it. Um, got in fact more than got through it. I was pretty, you know, pleased with that, uh, and the experience of it was was uh, was fantastic. Unfortunately, the show finished early because it, for whatever reason, it just didn't get ticket sales. Right. Um, and, and which is weird because it's happened to the show all over the world. Even though people love it and it's a great musical, I think people it doesn't it doesn't have the music from the film. Right, has a shorter lifespan because of that, you think? No, I just think people expect, A, they already know what the story is, yep. et cetera, and B, maybe they were thinking that it's going to have the music from the original film and things like that. So um, whilst it's a great musical, um, it's it struggled for longevity wherever it played for some strange reason. But, yeah, I loved it. It was great. And, of course, getting your kid off in front of people every night was always – I mean, in Sydney Dance Company, we used to get nude all the time. And because um, that was just what you did, what we did on stage, at, you know, the ballets, um, the but that was just kind of then you'd dance around nude, but with full Monty, you know, it was done with lighting, so things weren't really <laughs> out on show. And um, but that was a fun, fun musical. Oh, it's, it certainly had lasting memory in this fan's view. The other one is, um, does Paul still do warm up comedy? What is that question? Uh, I think that person is confusing me for the New York comedian called Paul Mercurio. Right. Okay. Um, he spells well, his I, name differently to mine. I couldn't find the the relevance in the question yeah. at all. <laughs> so every now and then, um, I will get messages, you know, from people saying, "Oh, you were great last night in the show, and thanks for talking to me, and good luck in Minnesota." and and I just have to email back and go, you got the wrong Paul Mercurio. So, Are you um, getting any of his checks, though? Oh, sadly, no. No. And he right. certainly doesn't get any of mine because I don't get any. Let's finish with this, Paul. Um, uh, tell me your website address for, for the rubs, and uh, I'm, I'm going to get on myself shortly and place an order as well. But we're going to promote this with your permission on, sure. the, uh, on the site as well. Um, yep. We're going to put a little ad into the show as well for them, and, and we'll get it up there. So in, in, in 15 seconds, why should we buy the rub or why would someone want to buy your rub? Hey, you want to change your life? Buy my rub. <laughs> um, look, I better start making some. I've only got um, FODMAP, um, beef and pork at the moment. So I've got I've got to make some. So if you order some, go for it. But uh, it may take you, uh, you might not get it for a week because I've got to 
get my finger out and into the garage and make stuff. But paulmccurio.com is my webpage. You can buy my cookbooks off there. You can buy rubs. I've got a few recipes up there as well. But, um, you know, it's, uh, it's just spice up your life, Darren. Uh, I'm, I'm all for it. I'm going to get on board. I, I know my my brother-in-law, Stephen, up in Queensland, is mad on the, on the smoker as well. So I'll get on him. We'll certainly get some things going there. This is a great time to tell our audience that all of this is done. All the actors, singers, dancers, etc., we have on this program is all free of charge. So we want to continue to support um, local actors. We want to continue to support people through, uh, especially through the pandemic, and and get you guys some orders, especially on stuff like this, and some awareness. Paul, it's been awesome having you on, especially making yourself available so quickly today um, after the phone call. I, I'm really glad to have met you. I'm a little maybe starstruck in some sense because you're a really normal, lovely guy. And I'm, you've probably heard that a million times. You, I could see myself down in the Mornington pub having a beer with you talking about rubs quite closely. Well, you know, um, it's funny, you know, I might be at a pub. I do like my, I do like pubs. Um, or even at Woolies, you know, people will say, what are you doing here? And I go, shopping? i got to live. <laughs> I'm just a normal bloke. Maybe season three might be a little cooking show where we go and do Barbies at people's houses or something. Well, it has been suggested. Has it? I mean, you right. know, there's been plenty of ideas thrown around about that sort of stuff. And um, if you can find some money, go for it. As well, I've tried to pitch a few shows. Again, that's, I mean, it's hard enough getting your job as an actor, trying to pitch your own show, even though you've had a successful series of food. Yep. You know, I've done four, I've done 52 episodes of um, Mercurio's Menu and occasionally we rated over a million viewers wow we can't get money to make another one what just can't get the sponsors in for it is that right yeah well TV won't, I mean, stations won't put money in it's just a little show you know they it's the big shows they they kind of put in so anyway that's a whole other conversation that's so. another conversation for a barbecue show perhaps yeah, we, yeah let's do oh, it it is amazing i'm so glad you come on I, I really thank you for your time i know it's tough to give up your time um but this is great. We're all going to get some fun. And most importantly, your fans are going to be stoked to have seen where is Paul Mercurio now. That's well, I'm here now. And um, you got to learn how to say choreographer. Choreographer. I'm not going to edit that out because, it, or it might end up in a bit of a bloopers one later. <laughs> We're working. I'm leaving it in there. All right, mate. All right. Good on you. Take care. Thanks again. Thanks, Chatting. Take care. Go, go on, you, mate. Bye-bye.